To the left, we have the LG OLED G3. To the right, we have the LG OLED C1 from 2021. Now, this is gonna be a very honest answer, so if you want the answer that's popular, I'm not your guy. The LG G1 does win a little bit, but then so does the C1. So it's gonna come down to the winner being basically, if you prefer brightness, you're gonna go with the G1 or the G2. Well, G3, we're on so many so many different models, they just might as well name them all the same, right? But the G3 is gonna be if you like brightness, the C1 is gonna be if you prefer richness of color. So if you look at the image on the screen right now, you're gonna see screen space reflections and things like that via ray tracing. So if you notice the highlights on the suit, you're gonna see a lot more illumination along the shoulder blades, the arms, the background separation from the foreground. You're gonna notice all of this stuff kind of tracing around, where here they're a lot more muted. Now, counteractively, you're gonna see the details a lot better. This is going to be essentially the biggest difference that plays back and forth. It doesn't really matter who compares these TVs, that's the difference. Notice this image here. You're gonna see that the highlights coming in over the horizon are a lot brighter, especially that sun. The general global illumination or full screen illumination is going to look a lot better. So you're gonna notice that again, that extra brightness from the 70% brightness booster that they're claiming this year is coming into a major effect. However, it does blunt the details. So if you look over here to the right, you're going to notice that the details are a lot clearer. You're going to just see cities on the horizon a lot better, pretty much everything better, like I was saying before. But it's not just that. If you look at where Spider-Man is sitting, you're going to notice that there is a lot more contrast kind of creeping in around those pillars or whatever you want to call them, right? I don't actually know their technical name, don't really care. But the idea here is that he's sitting on it, you can see it more three-dimensionally. That three dimension is coming from the amount of contrast kicking out of not being overly brightened, where counteractively the G3 is just a little bit more pale by comparison. We can also notice there is a richness to the suit that Spider-Man has by comparison. The blue is just gonna target a darker color, a richer shade of red, versus a little bit more pale. Now, one can also argue though, artistically, it can change for what you perceive to be accurate because we can say that if you're in a bright sun scene, everything is going to be well lit and it's going to be a little bit more pale. So you can kind of argue that, but then you can all kind of argue that it's sunset too. So it's going to be darker. So this really comes down to you have to choose what kind of person you are. If you prefer brightness, you're going to go with the G3. If you prefer details, the C1. Neither is doing anything wrong. I don't want you to hear this and think either is a bad TV. It's just a difference in how they process things because of the technology. Now again, I don't care who you are though, the highlight details coming through on scenes like this on the G3 do make a big difference because you can see the water kind of illuminate like you would in real life and that is always a super reward. So that's the biggest benefit and that's probably where you're gonna maybe wanna spend the extra $1,500. Is it a $1,500 difference? Is it something that's worth that kind of money? I think only you can really decide. For me personally, I mean, yeah, kinda. It depends, it really depends on what you're doing with it though. Like if you're watching the local news, do you really need these kinds of screen space reflections? No. If you're gaming, yes. If you're watching movies, yes. So it depends on what your thing is. So that's also another part of this. I mean, I wouldn't like, for example, for your parents for a second bedroom, I wouldn't recommend buying something that, you know, has all these highlights that again, they wouldn't ever appreciate if they're just watching the local news. So things like that are to be considered. Now let's talk about when things are in motion on the screen. Both TVs are champions in motion. I think essentially what the G3 does is take what we had on the C1 and improve it a little bit. Not by a lot, just by literally like a hair. You'd really have to sit here and really squint your eyes to try to notice any perceptible difference whatsoever. But the difference here is that you're basically getting everything we loved about the C1, minus the richness and color, but you're getting the brightness. And now you're seeing this scene that we were just talking about a second ago, we're seeing it actually in motion. And you can kind of see what I'm talking about. The highlight advantage of the G3 is just massive when you see the sun rays and all that stuff. So again, for people on PS5, Xbox, PC, doesn't matter, any kind of ray tracing game like we have here, it's gonna look incredible on the G3. The, C3, uh, the C1, not so much. So that's something that you're gonna have to consider, but also the details, again, when in motion, you can just see way more as far as those details. So continuing with what I was talking about as far as color, if you look to the left, you're gonna notice that it's just targeting a more cool or more, 
uh, we call it washed look in terms of the color temperature. Versus over here, you're seeing the actual green of what Helheim would actually look like. So the accuracy is just there on the C1, where the G2, unfortunately, because of the brightness booster, they prioritize things like Atreus's armor and things like that, like the little highlight in the background. It needs to brighten those things up to give you that shock and awe that you're going to see when you walk through a retail store, not necessarily favoring the accuracy that we can get out of something like this. Now, to be very clear, both of these TVs have been fully calibrated by yours truly. You will not see an image like this out of the box, and I will show you what the TV will look like if you try to compare it out of the box. There you have it. That's what it would actually look like. So the TV to the left, not looking its best, it kind of will be what a lot of you guys have been complaining about. I'm not joking when I tell you I've seen a lot of people complaining saying like, hey, I'm going to return my LG G3. I just don't see a $2,000 image out of the box. You are not going to see what I'm doing here. This is something that takes specialty training, knowledge and years of experience to do. Most TV manufacturers, by most I mean all of them, are not going to give you what you pay for out of the box. You are going to have to hire a professional. Now these professionals are going to charge you anywhere from $250 to $500. And if that sounds ridiculous, that's because it is. So what I do is I sell my settings for 5 bucks. join our membership, and you'll be able to see what this is supposed to look like versus the garbage that you're getting out of the box. Now, because I'm dramatic, I'm going to show you what that actually looks like. So we're going to go to the same image yet again. So you can see it looks like trash before. You kind of already know that. And we're going to show you the after. Nah, let's do something different. I want to show a different image. Why don't we go to that Spider-Man example? Because I think that was a pretty decent example of well, how bad it could look. But we're going to show color here. So if you notice, the water is all washed out. His suit's all washed out. Everything's basically really cool versus this lifelike image over here with all the color in the world. But I'm going to show you just how different it gets with the proper settings. And just like that, you can see there's a clear difference when you have the settings dialed in. So I cannot stress this enough. Don't just take your TV out of the box. You are not going to see what I'm doing here. Now, the reason I bring this up is because in comparisons you will watch on YouTube, you will see people whipping TVs out of the box and saying one's better than the other. That is not how you do this job. So I'm going to show you how it's actually done by giving you what you actually paid for. Now, this is an excellent example to show you the difference as far as color richness. Now, I'm going to restart this scene here, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pause it right about here. I want you to pay close attention to the details and the background. So you're going to notice a couple different things happening here. For one, there's a little bit of a red push on the C2 in terms of the way they produce yellows. Sometimes you can see a little bit of red push, not ideal, again, when you're trying to get it accurate. It does help skin tones a little bit in some examples, but not all. And then if you notice this tree right here, very clear in the background. Now, both are doing a good job. Excuse me. I'm not saying that they don't, but what I am saying is that there is a difference in the way that they render things. For example, the highlight placement now on the armor, the head that's kind of floating by his hip, it just kind of happens way better when you, again, have the proper setting. So that out of the way, I also want to draw attention to the three dimensionality. So if we look at the image to the left, it's just more three dimensional. This is because the amount of highlight difference from dark to light is just stronger on the C3 or the G3. So you're going to notice that you're going to have a more dim look here to the right. That dim look does tend to blunt the contrast in certain examples. This is one of them, and you're not going to have as three-dimensional of an image. But if you notice, you're going to see a little bit of some clipping in some areas, if you aren't already, where you're going to just see when fog rolls in over the screen, you're not going to have the same level of detail and armor, characters, foreground, background, buildings, foliage, everything. That is a problem if you're watching battle scenes where there's fog or there's chaos or there's a memory scene like now or something dramatic where someone's coming in, kind of trying to light the mood. It kills a little bit of the ambiance. Also, if we catch this frame here, you're going to notice that this is just targeting blue. It's just all blue. That's not accurate because if you look here, you're supposed to have more of a grayish kind of color, which again, that's not necessarily happening. And again, it's not to say that it's doing everything else bad because overall, if I look at which one's more striking, which one feels more like I'm looking through a TV versus at it, the TV to the left in this example is giving me that, but the accuracy is gone. So that's something that you have to weigh up. Now, again, the relevancy of show, showing you this is because I know a lot of you guys do own the C1. And honestly, if you could find one, you probably could pick one up for what, 800 bucks, 
in some cases, 600, I've seen people get great deals. So then it kind of becomes, do you really need to spend the extra money? And that's the conversation we're having here. I mean, if you already own a C1, the answer for me would unequivocally be no. I couldn't in good conscience say I own an LG C1, C2, C3, and then say just run out and buy the G3. It's just so much better. I can't really say that. The highlight detail is great and it's nice and it has that cutie OLED kind of pop to it as far as highlights. And a little bit better as we saw when I compared against the S95B. However, its color accuracy does take a hit because again, the nature of W OLED is that anytime you have that white light being illuminated, those pixels dilute, which means your colors will wash out by nature. Now again, LG does a good job with MLA or micro lens array trying to get this stuff kind of tighter so they don't have as much color dilution, but it's still going to happen because of the nature of the panel. Unless they go QD OLED or RGB OLED, you're still going to have color loss. So the essence of this is really, again, if you want color, you just target the OLEDs that don't get quite as bright like the G3, G2, G1 or C1 rather. If you want something that has just the most impressive highlights because all you care about is brightness, then the TV to the right is going to be your guy. Kind of the reoccurring theme I told you it would be in the beginning. So in essence, the LG G3 is more or less the winner in highlights, but in everything else, it is going to have to be kind of weighed heavily against the market because as you see, you're getting most of the picture that the G3 is offering on the C1. And again, if that's something that you weren't expecting, well, there you go. If you have a C1, it's still fantastic. And yes, I will be giving you guys new C1 settings for my members. Now, also, it's important to note that both TVs are still champions. They are fantastic. And the G3, frankly, is one of the better LG OLEDs produced. However, I still think that there is room for improvement. The color red is still a weakness. So both of these TVs are still going to struggle with that comparatively against something like the Samsung S90C QD OLED technology. And you're going to notice it by like, a country mile is going to be pretty bad. So neither are going to win in that aspect. So it's really up to you to decide how you're going to go about purchasing a television. If you're somebody that just wants the best color period, honestly, go with quantum.oled. If you're somebody that wants brightness, slight accuracy, but you also don't want to break the bank, then something like the G3 makes the most sense, especially given you can get a larger size for less money. It ultimately does boil down to this though. No matter what you pick between the C1 the G3, the LG OLEDs typically do a decent job of giving you best value for the dollar out of the OLED market, albeit times are changing. So I would personally recommend making the jump to a quantum dot OLED. And that's just honest. But that being said, though, our winner is the G3 by I, I kid you not, like like literally a hair. But if you have questions, comments, concerns, so on, and so forth, or you have anything you need help with, let me know in the comments down below. And thanks so much for watching the number one brand in honesty. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later.